Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I'm going to be going through eight different ways that you can be making gold in BFA. Gold making, or at least gold generation in general, has taken a massive hit in Battle for Azeroth. They've kind of ruined the gold that you can get from doing world quests, and they've really killed the gold that you get from missions. And then we used to get gold from emissaries every day that's not a thing anymore, and we used to get gold from paragon caches that aren't a thing anymore, and we used to get extra mats from these shoulder enchants that aren't a thing anymore, and overall, it's a little grim out there. So in this video, I'm going to count down through eight methods that work in BFA, kind of building up to the ones that have been most useful for me. Number eight is LFR. The flip side of building up to the most useful methods is that I start with one that I don't actually do. That doesn't mean that this doesn't work. So when you queue for LFR, there is a flat like 200 or so gold that you get per wing. Plus you're gonna get an augment rune off of most bosses and those will sell for a certain amount of gold. So you add that in for like three or so bosses. And then if you play a tank or a healer and you can queue with one of those call to arm satchels, that's another 900-ish gold plus another bunch of augment runes that you can then sell or use, but what kind of nerd does that? And then if any epic gear drops, you can scrap that or you can disenchant it if you happen to have disenchanting. And then you're also getting a chance for raid finder BOE epics to drop for you. And if any of those happen, you can sell those typically for like 20 to 40K or so these days. So there is gold to be made from LFR. And the nice thing about this one is that it is most like actually playing the game. You can get actually valuable practice for playing your class in LFR. Sure, it may be very, very easy, but at least you have time hitting the boss in the same room that you will if you're going to do it again later in a higher difficulty raid. So you can kind of practice doing everything perfectly while potentially making a bit of gold. This is still on the bottom of the list because if you creep on my armory, you will notice that I don't practice what I preach haven't done any LFR and I don't think you could pay me to do it. For some people, the trade-off of having to sit through LFR may not be worth whatever gold you get for doing it, so there's that. Number seven is crafting professions, and depending on which one you choose, if you decide to use a crafting profession and what server you want, this can be very, very hit or miss. Generally speaking, the best crafting professions for gold in BFA so far, you have alchemy at the top, inscription, enchanting is up there, cooking, I guess, although that's a secondary, so everybody can do that. There's no reason not to mess with it. And that's like, like the most of it. Don't mess with trying to craft gear. It's just, it's a bad idea. It maxes out at item level, who cares? And you can't upgrade it, so there goes that. Inscription in particular right now is doing pretty well off of Vantus runes, and even if there's nothing you can craft, you can still do reasonably well off of buying herbs when they happen to be cheap, especially something like Winter's Kiss or Star Moss, and then milling it to make inks to either craft with or hold on to for a rainy day. There is profit to be made with crafting professions, but do be careful to check that whatever you're crafting is profitable before you craft it, because even things that can seem like an easy gimme, like potions or flasks, may be selling at a loss. Because professions are so easy to just pick up and start in BFA, you don't have to have ever had it before, you can start working on your BFA leveling right away. That means that basically anybody can do it, and there's actually more demand for mats as people level these professions than there is for the stuff that's coming out of them, because it's so accessible to start crafting these flasks and pots or whatever it is that you're crafting. So proceed with caution, but you can do pretty well off of crafting professions. Number six is Warfront Contributions, and specifically stockpiling the different things that could be potential Warfront Contributions ahead of the Contribution phase. And then when that phase starts, you look at which ones are the thing and sell those for a million bajillion gold, or just more than you would have otherwise sold them for. There's no definite way to tell which materials will be the next Warfront Contribution, but it does pick from a predefined list. So you can just stock up on everything whenever it happens to be cheap and then sell the thing that's good and then hang on to the rest of it for later. If I was making this video a month ago, this would have been way higher up the list because this was very, very good for the first cycle or two of Warfronts. But as time goes on, the rewards that you get for actually contributing, which is rep with 7th Legion or Honorbound and war resources become increasingly useless. So that one may not last forever. Number five is selling BFA battle pets, specifically the ones that you can get for polished pet charms. There are a massive array of different pets that you can get for polished pet charms, and many of those are either locked to one faction or the other, or sometimes hidden behind quest progress. Sometimes you need to do a quest out in the world in order to unlock that pet on the vendor for pet charms, and sometimes those quests are faction specific. So if you happen to have unlocked something like that, you can farm up pet charms, and that is much easier if you have access to some alts. And for not that much effort in doing the world quest to get your pet charms, you can buy a pet for like 100 or 150 charms and sell it for a lot more. Of course, this is going to depend on your server's pet market. You may not be able to sell it very quickly, but for a raw time invested for gold output method, this is probably one of the most efficient ones on the list. If you are very, very fancy, you can experiment with selling the pet across different servers where you might get more gold for it. And selling battle pets cross servers is this whole other topic that you can make a lot of gold with, but at the very basic level, if you don't really feel like you need your pet charms and you'd rather make some gold off of them, buy pet charm pets that are either faction exclusive or locked behind quest progress or both 
preferably if they're cute, cage them, and then sell them on the auction house. Number four is disenchanting. Notice we're saying disenchanting and not enchanting. Enchanting is a profession that I've taken on almost all of my characters at this point, and the reason for that is that even though we can scrap stuff now and that's cool, you can get some mats out of it, the gold value of the mats that you get from scrapping a thing is like here, and then the gold value of the shard or dust or crystals that you would get from disenchanting the thing are like way up here, plus you don't have to go back to the scrapper. It's just better in every way if you don't need that profession slot. You won't get any expulsion this way, so that is a downside to consider, but you should consider whether you really need to expose them or if it's just gonna sit in your banks until they finally decide to add a trader or let us trade it between alts or something reasonable. Like we mentioned in professions, there is sometimes some gold to be made in crafting the enchants, but you really wanna check and make sure. And then even if there is gold to be made in it, I wouldn't craft too many so that you don't end up stuck sitting on a whole pile of them while the market price drops. A great tool to use to figure out if you would make more gold selling the mats or crafting the thing and selling it is TSM. In the TSM profession window here, you can see a raw number that is either positive or negative, very clearly color coded, super handy. Number three is fishing, and I am weirdly excited by how good this one has been this expansion. This time around, fish are required for basically all of the good cooking recipes, massive amounts of them are being sold in the auction house, and there is really no shortcut to getting them, so the best thing you can do is pick a spot and fish. You don't need a special fishing skill, you don't have to level up a haunted fishing rod, there aren't even any quests. You just, you just go fish and that's the whole thing. The three keys to making gold with fishing in BFA are one, pick the right place to fish. You will catch two specific types of fish depending on whether you are coastal or inland and Colteras or Zandalar. So learn where the different fish are from and I'll put up a chart so you can just screenshot it. And then go fish in the place where the fish are worth more. So on my server that happens to be inland Zandalar for red tail loaches for the feast and coastal Zandalar for slimy mackerel for the haste food. Those are the two fish that tend to sell really well. The second key is picking the right time time to fish, and that is because the midnight salmon drop rate is much better during nighttime. According to research done by the user Runtime Error on Wowhead, the catch rate is around 3.5% from 6.30 at night to 6.30 in the morning, and about 1% for the rest of the time. Midnight salmon, of course, important ingredient in feasts, tend to sell pretty well, and for the love of heck, do not right-click them to teleport to a nearby fish pool. It is never worth it. Method number two is auction house flipping, specifically flipping BOE epics. This isn't new to BFA, but with so many of my Legion methods being ruined, this is one of the ones that's been carrying over that's still going really strong. So the essence of flipping on the auction house is you buy something when it's cheap, and then you sell it for more. And it sounds really easy because it is. There's a whole bunch of tools to make it easier to identify when things are cheap so that you can invest in them and then to help you price them correctly. They also help you undercut. All of them are part of TSM. I do have some TSM guides on my channel that are updated for TSM4, so check those out. Flipping is not without risks. Sometimes you'll buy something and it seems like a really good deal and then somebody goes and posts like 15 of them in a day and the price completely tanks and then you're just hecked. Results may vary based on your server and on how often you're able to undercut, but overall a little bravery pays off and this is how I've made about half of my gold so far in BFA. And finally, the number one best nerd cash cow that I've been using in BFA is good old fashioned herbalism. You gotta love picking a couple of flowers. Herbs are the lifeblood of BFA, and while their prices are slowly coming back down to normal, they're still very far from normal, and you can make pretty disgusting gold by just picking as many of them as you can and then selling them. You don't even have to craft anything. You just pick the flowers, you sell the flowers, you're good. There are some tips that you can use to make picking the flowers easier. Obviously, number one, do not forget your BFA Herbalism Glove Enchant. Those are pretty cheap to buy. They make it much faster to pick. If you have access to one, use either the Sky Goal amount, which is BOE created by engineers that will allow you to pick herbs without being dismounted. So you can just kind of run along in a robot and grab herbs off of trees. You can also use the lumber extractor mount for the same thing. So if you're really close to having the 300 toys meta achievement and you just don't want to spend the gold for a sky golem, go collect some toys and finish that achievement because that mount will function in the same way. Plus it's green and then you'll look different and everybody will be like, wow, why is your sky golem moldy? And that makes you feel special. If you are planning on going on an herb collecting bender, then I recommend picking up some coarse leather barding. These cost a little bit more than the glove enchant and they only last a couple of hours, but they prevent you from being knocked off your mount, and that is invaluable, especially in some of the different herb farming spots. If you're looking for anchor weed, you want to target spots that have lots of spawns of sea stalks, river bud, winter's kiss, and akunda's bite, because anchor weed can spawn instead of any of those herbs. But generally speaking, if you're in an area where you can also grab some siren's pollen, that's good too, because that one tends to sell for the most outside of anchor weed, at least right now. The two spots that I really like farming herbs is going kind of down the river in Northern Tiergard Sound, and then up the coast, and then down the river, and then up the coast, that seems to be pretty good. And then if I'm just gonna kind of like AFK a character that I'm leveling with herbalism in 
the game, just log in every once in a while to grab a bunch of herbs in a safe spot. I just stick them in Bridgeport. There's a little inn in Bridgeport. This will only work for Alliance, but there's a little inn in Bridgeport in Tearguard Sound, and that place is just infested with star moss. And then you can kind of run and do a little bit of a loop and grab some sea stalks, grab some river bud from the river up north, and there aren't really any hostile mobs in that area, so you don't even have to fight anything. You can just log in, do a little lap, log out, and get some experience and some gold while you're at it. And that has been eight different ways that you can be making gold in BFA. I am personally hoping that in a future patch, they add back some more incentives for doing world quests. The 78 gold on its own just isn't cutting it for me. I would also like to see them add in traders at the very least for things like expulsum and also hydrocores and sanguicels, but that's a different video. In any case, thank you so much for watching. If you have a gold making tip that I didn't mention here that you want to share, put it down in the comments and then we can all get a little bit richer together. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.